Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. Seven twelve complete. Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation.
Boyd here, and I hope you have a hell of a good reason for calling me in the middle of the night. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd. I'll, I'll call you back later. No, no, wait. You're the girl from the prosecutor's office. Lana, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, I'm so embarrassed, Mr. Boyd. The first thing Mrs. Broom told me about you is that you almost never sleep. I don't sleep too much either, so I thought I'd call you and apologize for last time. <laughs> but it wasn't the last time, was it? Well, I I've been going over our conversation in my mind, and I realized how stupid I sounded. You're the chief of police, and there's a strange girl calling you, saying she'll be the next city prosecutor, just... just to share the news, I guess. <laughs> I must have sounded crazy. Not so crazy as you imagine, Lana. Uh, when I learned I was going to be police chief, my parents were already dead, and my only friend was working a thousand miles away from Freeburg. Wife and kids were relaxing on a distant island in the middle of the ocean. Took me six hours to get a hold of them. But I had to share the news with someone, or I would have gone mad. All the more because I was surrounded by half a dozen cops who figured they were ahead of me for the job. I figured you were feeling about the same. It's like you're reading my mind. Now I'm like an outcast here. Most of them still think that Mrs. Broom was joking or trying to show her deputies that she's in charge of appointing her successor. But I know it's no joke. Well, for some reason, I didn't doubt it, Lana. That's probably why I'm calling you. <laughs> I know it's selfish. I'm sure your wife isn't too keen on girls calling you at night. My wife and I, well, we're not living together. Maybe I'm the loneliest man in town, and that's why you called, to talk to someone even lonelier than you, huh? <laughs> Lana? You know, Mr. Boyd, maybe I'm an idiot, but until this moment, I didn't realize how lonely I am. Well, you're in luck, because now you can call me anytime. Uh, but if you do, you'll have to call me Jack. Jack? <laughs> It'll take more than one phone call to get used to that. Well, we're not in a hurry, are we? True.
Boyd. Well, finally, Jack. I've been dying to reach you these past two weeks, but I thought I should give you some time to recover your strength. How are you feeling? Better than ever, Mr. Sand, touched by your concern. Well, I hope this doesn't sound too sentimental, Jack. But while you were laying in a coma, I thought about our last meeting many times. It was such a fascinating conversation. You said it yourself. You're a true hunter. Ah, uh, no, Mr. Sand, it was you who said that. Was it? Well, it doesn't matter. What is important, Kendrick told me a lot about you, Jack. But I suddenly realized that he didn't give me the whole story. Why is it you only want half? What are you talking about? Well, why is it you only want to make half? Not a whole million, just half. Not one hundred thousand, but five. It's a very specific figure. How did you arrive at that number? Well, I was looking at a house a couple hours outside of Freeburg, down the river. I figured to buy it, move the family, and set everything up, I'd need right around five hundred thousand. It's not my style to take more than I need. Ah. I must admit, Jack, I imagined all sorts of reasons, but none of them were close to the truth. Are you disappointed, Mr. Sand? No, 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 not with you, Jack. Quite the contrary. I respect you even more. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Sand. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go home and get some sleep. Of course, Jack. I just... Oh yeah, the work is definitely piling on. <laughs> Truth is, if I didn't have Palmer helping me catch this psycho, I don't know what I'd do. Yeah. You know, when he got here, I... And the stuff the newspapers are saying, is it true? What are the newspapers saying? The girl who was killed. She filed a sexual harassment complaint against the mayor. What about the other victims? Were they harassed by the mayor too? Well, it, it's hard to say. Is it true? So far, the mayor's the only thing we have connecting the victims, but only one of them filed a complaint against him, and she withdrew it a few days later. Someone must have pressured her, but uh, it's hard to say anything for sure. But is it true? Do you think it's true? Well, let's just say it seems like it might be. What's the matter? The mayor raped me. Can you repeat that? The mayor of Freeburg, Stuart Rogers? He raped me. You heard me right. When did this happen? Four and a half years ago when I was just out of college. They gave a reception for us at City Hall. Rogers gave a speech and there were a few other speakers than dinner. I drank the champagne. It was hot out. The music was loud. I was feeling dizzy so I went to take a breath in a quiet corner. I found a conference room then a few minutes later the mayor came in with his guard. Rogers whispered something to the guard, and the guard left. I, I didn't have time to figure out what was going on. Rogers just walked up to me, grabbed me by the throat, and squeezed, and then he began to rape me. This went on. It lasted about ten minutes. 
Look, Lana, it would be very difficult to prove anything at this point, but You it... wouldn't have to prove anything. I have a videotape. A video? A recording from a surveillance camera. A cassette. The raping mayor, sitting in my closet next to Kramer versus Kramer. But how... Six months after it happened, someone slipped the cassette under my door. This was the same time the city administrator, Mary Simmons, was dismissed. Quite a scandal, if you recall. I think that must have to do with it. Lana, don't, don't worry about a thing. We'll use this tape and ambush the bastard. No, we're not going to do that. Lana, listen to me. You need it's to... It's been four years. Don't you think I've had time to think things through? I already decided I'm not pressing charges. Lana, whatever you've been thinking, I promise you, it would be better if No, you'd... it wouldn't be better. For the past few years, I've worked hard so that people would take me seriously, so they'd respect me as a professional. If I step forward now, I ruin all my efforts, my whole future, and I'll destroy my one chance to make this city better. I'll be a sympathy case, I'll be humiliated, and then I'll be attacked. And the one thing I won't ever get again is respect. Lana, you're talking about covering up a crime. I'm doing it because I know it's the right thing to do. Then you're a fool! Oh my god, I, I just... I made a mistake. Just forget everything I said. Lana. L Lana! Shit. progress.
Yeah, understood. Thank you very much, Walt. Sorry again for waking you up. Give my regards to Jean. Okay, got gotta run. H hey, Martin, wait a minute. Martin, you still hang around with uh, Bo Berenger? Of course. In fact, he's my stepfather. Great. Think he has a couple of men available? Today? Right now, in fact? There's something important I need taken care of. Um, sure. Something you need help moving? Uh, not exactly. Here's the address. I need this house watched. All day and all night until I say stop. If anyone suspicious goes poking around, tie him up and bring him here. I'll pay double the usual rate. Or triple. Whatever he needs. And nobody else knows about this, right? Jack, they're more into looking after valuables, not houses. What's the difference? Well, these guys probably wouldn't care either way. Okay, Jack, no problem. I'll make the call. As for your retirement, I've been... Uh, let's focus on today, Martin. Now keep that house secure, all right? Okay, okay. I have a phone in the car. I'll call Bo right away. I appreciate it, Martin. Believe me, I do. Hey, Jack. Yeah? Anything else I need to know about this? Uh, no. Better you don't. Hello? I'm an addict. Please, I don't want... Listen to me, Lana. R I really am an addict. For 20 years now, give or take. I've been lying to myself that I'm in control of the situation, and sometimes it really seems like I am, but sometimes in the more desperate moments, I become completely dependent on the pills. And it's just dumb luck that I haven't killed myself. Or someone else. More than a few times, I've come pretty close. I've been stoned while I'm driving was even stoned once during a firefight. I've been on drugs while I made decisions where dozens of lives were on the line. When I'm overworked, I need the pills. That's my problem. It's my weakness. But I always knew that if I admit my weakness, if I start talking about the problem publicly, if I go to rehab, then I'm already as good as retired. They'll take advantage of the scandal and get rid of me forever. It doesn't matter all the good work I'm trying to do at the police department. They'll just bury me. So I'm keeping my problem a secret, at least until I can retire. I have to. I know it's the right thing to do. You realize, Jack, this is the first time you ever called me? What? You called me this time. I thought you were just waiting for me to stop bugging you, but now you called me and you opened up, even though you didn't have to. <laughs> Maybe you're stoned? What? I... <laughs> no, I'm not stoned right now. Well, Jack, I guess you need me as much as I need you. I need you more than you need me. Now I know you're stoned. Lana, I'm... You were... I heard everything you said, Jack. I understood everything just fine. You don't need to say anything else. Right, exactly. Say no more.